On the 14th of April, 2010, AF Yetle Yekertle erupted with an explosion that made Iceland the focus of a media storm. The ash cloud produced by the volcano spread over the Atlantic Ocean and Europe, cutting off one of the world's busiest airspaces. Almost every European airport closed and airlines lost more than a billion dollars. The six-day standstill was disastrous for the economy. Worldwide, the tourist industry lost even more money, and countless small farmers and fishermen struggled to make ends meet as fish from Uganda, flowers from Kenya, and vegetables from Zambia were left to rot. Sports events and business meetings were cancelled. Meanwhile, around the volcano, the skies were dark and ash fell like rain covering the fields and roads. We may have to stop farming and move somewhere else. Leave the place where I grew up, my memories. Nobody really knows what lies in store. A few months later, the eruption ended, leaving the last few wisps of water vapor and a thick blanket of ash covering the ice around the crater. While the rest of the world forgets now the disruption is over, Icelandic volcanologists are not fooled. They know there are several larger volcanoes lying in wait. Eruptions are, of, of course, quite dangerous, and some of them uh, are really very damaging, uh, both to, to human life, to human health, and uh, to structures. In Eyjafjallajökull, we have we had a relatively small eruption, but in some other volcanoes here in, in Iceland, we, we expect uh, larger uh, eruptions than that. So we never, should never forget that. It had an impossible name, but by Icelandic standards, it was a small eruption. The big question is not whether another volcano will bring chaos and disruption to the world, but which one and when. Iceland's active volcanoes lie along the mid-Atlantic ridge. A long, jagged rift in the Earth's crust between two great continental plates. The rift almost divides Iceland in half. To the east lies Europe and Asia. To the west, the Americas. As the plates drift apart, the cracks widen and lava from deep in the Earth escapes. With one of the highest densities of active volcanoes in the world, Iceland is a magnet for volcanologists. For decades, scientists have had this turbulent land under continual surveillance, and Iceland has become a giant laboratory. The huge fallout from AF Yetla Yekutla has increased the pressure on the scientists to provide answers. Paul Einerson has spent the last 40 years studying earthquakes and volcanoes. He trained most of Iceland's geologists and is still trying to understand how this volatile land was created and how it could change. One of the problems of doing volcanology in Iceland is that we, we don't only have one vol active volcano or two active volcanoes, we have about 30 active volcanoes all along the rift. And uh, some volcanoes we don't really know very much about because mo many of them are really very complicated beasts and uh, uh, it takes really a lot of measurements to, 
to understand what they are doing and what, uh, how they do things. Uh, some volcanoes are simple and, uh, and easy to understand. Uh, one thing that we, we know about our volcanoes, that they're all different. They're all different from each other. Uh, we can rarely apply uh, our ideas about one volcano to, to the next volcano. So we have to measure them all. That, that, that's as simple as that. Uh, so we have to spread out uh, our observations. We have to make observations all around the, the country, and that it requires a lot of work. Science has come a long way since Jules Verne's professor tried to journey to the center of the Earth through an Icelandic volcano. But the challenge is still to work out what is going on deep below, from the few signs on the surface. Most of our volcanoes are doing nothing. They're just sitting there, recuperating after the, the last eruption or something, but most of them are very quiet and not, not doing anything. Some of them are preparing for the next eruption, but they're all uh, possible candidates for the next eruption. While any one of the 30 or more active volcanoes could erupt, there are four extremely dangerous candidates. Legend has it that Hecla is the gate to hell. She keeps her secrets well hidden and then erupts suddenly and dramatically every 10 years or so. Askia is a beautiful but deadly giant Sleeping quietly high in the mountains, few people knew she existed until she exploded with shocking consequences over a century ago. Hiding under the ice, Katla is the most fickle. She has demonstrated her power more than 20 times since people first came to Iceland, and now she's overdue. And finally, at the summit of this icy land, Grimsvorten is so remote that it was left in peace for the trolls and dwarves until scientists came calling. Bjorn Odson specializes in volcanoes which erupt under the ice. Grimsvoten lies under Europe's largest glacier. The relentless wind and bitter cold make it difficult to work up here. But scientists can at least take advantage of the long summer daylight hours to get to know the volcano better. Not easy when it's hidden under a vast featureless ice field, which in some places is 2,000 feet deep. The ice is so thick that eruptions can take place beneath it without anyone but the scientists being aware. These cliffs are the walls of the crater poking through the ice, the only visible part of the volcano. Below this jumble of ice and rocks lies not only the rift in the Earth's crust, but the hot spot or upwelling of molten rock which helped create Iceland. At this point, the hot magma from deep within the Earth pushes directly upwards towards the thin crust or ice at the surface. Bjorn and his companion are literally standing on top of a giant ice-covered cauldron. We are standing at Bimsrud Caldera, in the center of Bimsrud Caldera, which is based uh, on top of the hotspot, the underlying hotspot of Iceland. And the hotspot is uh, coming from the mantle, it's magma from the mantle, which is rising straight up, up to the crust of the ground and causing uh, high volcanism at this area. It's like in, in Hawaii and Azor Islands, uh, a magma plume rising from the mantle. We can talk about uh, double activity because it's uh, between uh, two continents uh, of, of uh, the mid-Atlantic Ocean. So we have uh, magma coming up while uh, the continents are spreading, and also due to the hot spot. And that might be the one reason for the Grimsvet is the most active volcano of Iceland, um, having confirmed of 70 eruptions since settlements in 874.
This is a high heat geothermal area and under the ice we have uh, spots of, of geothermal uh, causing the ice to melt and so we see the cauldron on the surface of the glaciers. And the more heat we have, the deeper the cauldron is. So uh, we monitor every year, we monitor these cauldrons by uh, GPS measurements and radar to see if they are uh, growing deeper or not. The rising magma melts the ice from below, forming huge lakes of water under the glacier. The ice sits on top, like a cap or a bottle top, holding in the water. When the volcano is ready to erupt, the rising heat causes even more water to melt. And sometimes the force of water shifts the cap suddenly, leading to dangerous flooding. Because it's in, in center of, of the caldera, it's difficult to uh, reach the outer world. So we have to come here twice a year and download the data from the station. And uh, now measurements are showing that the pressure, underlying pressure in the magma chamber, is close to what we had at the last eruption. So we could expect it uh, any time. The last yeah. eruption, yes, 1983, it was under the cliff over there. The year 2000, we have an eruption under the cliff more to the right. And 2004 in the corner over there. And the eruption sites have been moving more to the west uh, for the last eruptions. So uh, I would expect uh, the next eruption to happen to the nor northwestern corner of the caldera. But when you, like I say, when you found a rule in the nature, it changes. So Grimsvoten is as unpredictable as the next volcano. But these fresh carpets of ash and deep overflowing cauldrons signify to many volcanologists that this remote giant could be the next to blow.